Hey friends, let's implement refresh tokens today. But first, maybe let's answer the question, what actually are refresh tokens? Well, I asked GPT-4 about that, so let's have a look. A refresh token is a long-lived token used in authentication systems to request new short-lived access tokens when they expire. Now, this approach improves security by limiting the validity of access tokens, reducing potential damage from token compromise and allowing for easier revocation when necessary. Now, short-lived means that, for instance, a typical JSON web token should expire after an hour, for instance, but the refresh token then can be used to get a new access token, a new JSON web token, as we will do here in this example. And this process, again, as it says here, is more secure than issuing long-lived access tokens because if an access token is compromised, it is only valid for a short time. And additionally, we can also revoke the refresh token at any time if something is fishy. And then I ask GPT just for fun, could you explain refresh tokens to me as if I'm five? And then it says, a refresh token is like a special key that helps you get new keys to open a door when your old key doesn't work anymore. And this makes sure that even if someone steals your old key, they can't use it for a long time. All right, everything's clear now. So now let's implement this thing. I already have this little application here. Check out the older videos if you want to know what is going on here, but it is not really necessary. If you wanna have a look, what we are doing here is we simply register a user. We can leave it at the default values, string, string. And then we log in also with string, string. And with that, we get a JSON web token. And when then we use this JSON web token to authorize the user here. So we send an authorization header with this request here, for instance, and only with that token, now we are able to get the username, which is string in that case. But if we log out, for instance, and execute, it says 401, we are not authorized. And now additionally, in this tutorial here, we wanna add refresh tokens. They have nothing to do with JSON web tokens in essence, so the implementation is different here. This means in our example application, what we have is, for instance, our user model and with the authentication controller, I know Fed controller shouldn't do that. Let me just remove this, you can see that here. But it's about learning here, right? So in this Fed controller, we are creating this token and this is how that's done using an algorithm and so on. But refresh tokens, and also the claims here, that's important, right? But refresh tokens are in essence just a string of random characters. So there are no claims in there. It, is, it can be anything. It could be just five numbers or a really, really, really strong with random characters. And this is what we're going to do here. And you would also store the refresh token in a database. Again, we're not doing this here. We are using, in essence, here in the user service, just a static user, in essence, not here. Where is it again? In the auth controller, of course. So here, the static user. Right, so this is what you're going to do here, but in a real world application, of course, you would use a database. If you want me to do that and show you that, please tell me that in the comments, then maybe I can create another video for you. But for now here, you would, uh, or we would just extend our user model and then return the new refresh token with this user model. But before we can do that, we need another model and that would be the actual refresh token. So let's add this thing. And we do that by adding a new item called refresh token, all right? And here now we say this is simply a string, which is the token, and this is actually required. So let's do that and we get no warning here. Then we wanna set a created date like that and by default we can actually set this to daytime now and the last thing already in this case is the expires date almost expires also a property no default value here but what i also wanted to mention is that 
to be able to revoke a token, for instance, what you can do in a real world application is to also set an ID here and a flag that this thing now is revoked. And when someone is trying to use an older refresh token and you have some logic in your backend that is recognizing that, then you know that probably something fishy is going on here. So maybe you wanna do something then with that. All right, so this is the refresh token Next, the user model now gets this refresh token. So here we add a property, again, a string, which is the refresh token. Let's set this to string empty by default. Then also date time for the created date of the token, because again, we will return the refresh token, but then we would store this in the user object. All right, so that's that. And then also the expiry date token expires, something like that. All right, and with that now, we go to the auth controller. And here now you see we've got this login method. All right, so we're checking within this request, we've got this user DTO, username, password, all right? And this thing then checks if the username is actually there. So here in this example, again, we only have one static user. So that's that. I just wanted to show this in an earlier tutorial that with that we can check if the user is actually here. And then we're using bcrypt to check if the password is valid. And for that, we have stored a password hash in the user object and um, with bcrypt, then we are trying to verify this thing. If that's not correct, then we send a wrong password, bad request back. But after that, we're creating the JSON web token. And now here's the place to also create a refresh token and set the refresh token in a cookie. And this will be an HTTP only cookie. Why is that? Well, with that, it is inaccessible with JavaScript. So it is only used to send this to the server and the server then is doing its magic with that. So for that, we need two methods and I will implement them in a sec. First, the refresh token here, we will use a method called generate refresh token. All right, and then another one to set the refresh token in the cookie. And this then will be the refresh token here. Now the methods. First one, private, returning a refresh token called generate refresh token, like that. Error is gone, nice. And this thing now looks like that. So this is a new refresh token. Yep, this thing is required, of course. And oh, this is interesting formatting. And now the only fancy stuff we here do convert to base 64 string. I told you I wanna have a random character string here. And then we choose or use the random number generator using system security cryptography. And here now get bytes and maybe 64. All right, after that, now the formatting works, nice. We say expires in date time now and add days, for instance, seven. So this thing then is valid for a week. And here's something expired, expires. All right, now this should work, okay created by default this day time now. So I think we don't need that. And in the end, we just return the new refresh token. All right. And uh, let, me, let me just stop the app. Of course, I hit save a bit too early because we haven't implemented the set refresh token method. But this is what we're going to do next. So private void set refresh token refresh token, a new refresh token, All right? So we're sending or giving this as an argument to this method. First thing now, cookie options. I told you that I want to set HTTP only to true. So let's do that here. So the cookie options are done like that. Just new cookie options, simple, right? And here we say HTTP only is true 
and again expires set to end days seven or what we can also do of course we say new refresh token expires that's nice and here now we say response cookies append refresh token and then new refresh token token and our cookie options with that we have our cookie and additionally we also want to set the data here to the user object so our refresh token is the new refresh token token then token created created and the last thing user token expires is new refresh token expires and now down here in the json web token i said that uh, this is now valid for one day again usually now you could could set this to an hour for instance so for instance at hours only one so maybe this is then more realistic according to gpt at least all right so we've got now the set refresh token method this is done we've got generate refresh token and this is what we're now doing when we're logging in and maybe we can test that already. So let's start the app here. Here we are. So now let's say we want to register with string string and execute. So we've got this new user and now we log in with string string as well. We get the JSON web token. And when we also open the, the console, now we can have a look in the application tab, not the local storage in the cookies now. We've got a refresh token, isn't that nice? And this is really this random string I was talking about. Isn't that great? So this is what we get here. And now when we send a request, so we set our, well, we actually don't have to do that because with the, or in the network tab, we can see that we can run this we hit execute and we get the 401 back, but still in the headers, we now see our refresh token. All right, so that's already nice, but still there's one more thing we have to do. And this is, well, getting a new refresh token. So refreshing our refresh token. All right, for that, we need another endpoint. So let's just implement it down here maybe. And this is a post method, HTTP posts URL, maybe refresh token. Again, public async task action results. Refresh token. And actually we are returning a string here. So we could of course also enter that here. So now the thing is with that, method, we are not only refreshing our refresh token, we are also returning a new JSON web token so that only this thing now, or this is the new one that is valid. All right. And the new refresh token is also the only refresh token that is valid because you would check if this thing matches then with the refresh token that is stored in or stored for the current authenticated user or the user that tries to to do something with this uh, with this API. All right, so now again, var refresh token is request cookies, and then refresh token. And with that token, we first want to check if this is actually correct, right? So if user refresh token does not equal the the given refresh token here then we return something like unauthorized and invalid refresh token maybe and additionally we check if this thing is still valid so user refresh token almost it's actually token expires so token expires is less than smaller than date time. Now, 
And in that case, we also return unauthorized and then token expired. And that you of course have to decide for yourself because could be a valid request. It is the real user with the valid JSON web token or the valid refresh token, but it just took the user too long to log back into your application. How dare this user, why is he or she waiting a week to log in to your app? So now here we say create token. And if that would be the case, of course, the user's logged out and the user would have to log in again. I think it's not that bad. We get our new refresh token again with generate refresh token. And again, we set refresh token, new refresh token, and we return OK token. All right. And this is actually no asynchronous method. That's correct. But if we would use an entity framework here, for instance, then this would make sense. But I don't care here now. So let's just restart the application. I think you get the idea. We're back here now. We have a new endpoint. What is happening when I just do it like that? I get invalid refresh token. Isn't that interesting, right? So of course, no user here because we restarted the API. So let's now use another user, Joel, please, with Ellie. Still a really, really big fan of, maybe you guessed it, The Last of Us. And now we log in. Try it out. Joel and Ellie, we hit execute. This is now our beloved JSON web token. Great. So now what can we do? Well, we can check that. Authorize close. Do we get our name? Yep, beautiful. This works. And now here, where is it? Refresh token. Again, we hit execute and we get a new JSON web token. Well, now this token is valid for a complete, oh, for an hour. So maybe I would have to wait for an hour. Don't want to do that, but we can do something else actually, because here now we see, or maybe we can have a look here in the uh, application tab again, we see this value, right? So now what we can do is to check if, let's have a look here again, this thing is invalid or you want to or really use an invalid refresh token. We just remove the queue here. Was it a queue? hope so. Let execute invalid refresh token. Now let's put this back. Execute. Yep. This is now our JSON web token again. This works. But now to test if this thing is invalid and you see here this thing changed, right? So we really get a new refresh token. And now let me just change the date. There we are. And now seven days or just a bit more. Let's change it to this date here. And you try to execute it again, token expired. All right, so this works and this is how you implement refresh tokens. If you haven't watched the complete series yet, make sure to click the video on the screen to watch it right now.